Mark Crowther has raised over £13,000. Help him raise some more by just donating £5 to win a signed Luton shirt. Check out the link below. Welcome to Owen the Town, I'm Luke Gregory and here's what's coming up today. Luton secure sixth place and their spot in the championship playoffs with a 1-0 win over Reading. All thanks to Harry Cornick's beautifully worked goal. All that hard work he had to do to uh, stay hidden behind the keeper. Absolutely love it. Today we'll be discussing the, Le- the Reading game in a little bit more detail and also taking a look ahead of our two playoff, championship playoff semi-finals against Huddersfield. Who would have ever thought We'd be in this position so quickly. Um, very exciting times. Days with me. The tire's a little sleepy, but he's uh, managed to get himself over today uh, to join us. Uh, good evening. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Ooh. Hello. What a lovely day, eh? What a brilliant weekend overall. Let's it be fair. Let's awesome. just sum up this brilliant weekend we've had. It has been a brilliant, brilliant weekend. Well, it? all around, right? Like, even our result, amazing. Then the boys down the road getting relegated. And yep. the boys up the road not making the playoffs. Oh, I love what it. could be better? To be fair, that's just a good point. Yeah, I never looks at it like that. Yeah, three in a row. They come in three, isn't they? So yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Perfect yeah. Uh, last week on the podcast, we said hopefully this time next week we'll all be sat here in a playoff spot and and being all happy. And look, it turns out in the end we could have lost on Saturday and we would have still been in the playoffs. So we just, all knew we were going to be there. Yeah, we all knew. Just hang on. You're just panicking a little bit. Come you? on. <laughs> I bet if we wound it back, there'll be one of us that has been really negative. Me, probably. Yeah. yeah, you. Well, it's because I get nervous and I wanted us to do it and I felt we deserved to do it and we did do it. Over so. the season, we definitely deserve to do it. We yeah. definitely, and, and for, forevermore, if these people want to keep underestimating our, our strengths, then, you know, so be it. Um, so today we thought we'd look, we'd, we'll quickly look back at the Reading game and then we'll do a massive playoff focus. And I think we were planning on doing a, a podcast before the first leg, but I'm not sure we're going to have time to do that. So we'll throw it all into this one today. Um, so let's kick off some three-word reviews. Becca says, playoffs, well-deserved. Matt, so, so proud. Uh, Roloff says, never in doubt. Justin did the basics. Andy says, what a season. Uh, Fred, K, Sarah, Sarah. Lee, injury-free game. Howie says, three more wins. Adam, cheeky Harry Cornick. And Dan and many others says, he's behind you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll never see a, a crazier girl, will you? Uh, three more wins, Howie. It could be, could be two wins and a draw. That's enough. Could be three draws. And three penalty shootout wins. But it's still a win. No, there, isn't three penalty shootout wins. Two penalty shootout wins, sorry. Yeah. 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 See, it's <laughs> not one of good today. We did the Cheers, basics. Mate. It's been late. It's been a long day. It, we did, yeah, everyone's proud, aren't they? It, do you know what? I can't disagree with any of those. Any of those tonight. Apart from injury free game, Lee said there. Did I uh, not see maybe one or two have a little knock? I think Sonny played through a knock, I think was reported. Um, but yeah, it's nice that no one's I had to be yeah, stretched off or yeah, that's been sub due to an injury. Honest, that's the one thing we're looking at at the moment is the injury list. And obviously, let's, well, yeah, let's hope that there was no injuries, there was no knocks, whatever else. Because we need as many players fit as possible now for the playoffs because we are struggling still in certain areas. But you know, hopefully, don't matter, does it? One-off games, now we're going to do it. That's like Justin said, we did the basics right. And Saturday was all about getting the win. I think Harry Cornick said that in his post-match as well. It was like, look... We the goal was straight on half time meant we could go in at half time and regroup and make a new game plan just to not lose the game. And yeah, it's not pre, but we've seen in the League One playoffs, obviously the semi final's over for them now. None of them games are really pretty. Like especially with Wickham and, and Sunderland tonight, had to grind and proper dig in to get the result. And I just think when it comes to that stage where you need these wins a game like us against Reading on Saturday doesn't need to be pretty. Don't need to be free-flowing football. Just get the win. To be fair, I thought it was pretty free-flowing first half, though. Do you know what, right? I didn't realise how many chances we had until I watched the highlights back on Quest. In the first 25, 30 minutes, yeah, it was yeah, about three few, or four, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, three or four clear-cut chances as well that you'd probably say, you know, you probably could have scored at least, what, three of them. Yeah, and then Jerome hit the bar, uh, bar in the second yeah. half. 
Um, it's always it's always nervy when you're in that sort of game. You're on edge until you get a goal. Yeah. Um, but it's no more than we deserved. And and I don't want to be disrespectful to Reading, but you know they weren't all that, were they? They didn't offer that much against us, really. I don't think they had any. Well, not many, maybe one or two chances where you thought, oh, they could score there. But then after that, we shut them up. They, they didn't get near it. And so, you know, what a bizarre goal to, to win the game. But mm. I, I don't think we ever looked like losing it. No. I don't think. I think we were good for the three points yeah. Saturday. We, we, were, we were much better than, than Red and I'd say. I mean, second half, we weren't great, but... Doesn't like say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Dig exactly. it out. That's it. Just if, go for it. If the playoff final ends like that, I don't care. Oh no, of course not. None of us care, Dave. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is this is great? I mean, if yeah. we can dig out results like that and grind them out, like Luke was saying about four, two, three minutes ago, then why not? Because at the end of the day, that's what happens at the end of the season. Well, I say unfortunately, fortunately for some teams, you get there and you have to. Think when people are scrapping for results, yeah. you do whatever you can to win a game of football. Yeah, and realistic, right now we know we can't play the best football because we haven't got the best squad available to us. True. So if you have to, you have to do it, you do what you have to do. Like you said, Wickham last night. Wickham okay, last night, a, a perfect example. And yeah. we'll, we'll talk about this more later on when we look ahead to the playoffs. But Wickham last night, you look at the stats. I think they had two shots to MK's twenty nine or something. It's ridiculous. They, they've just it? defended brilliantly. And then Sunderland tonight got absolutely. I had to listen to it on the radio, but they got no. absolutely battered the whole game and and snuck a winner in the ninety fifth minute. To be f- mm, well, yeah, I watched it to be fair whilst, whilst I was waiting for you. Yeah, sorry, mate. Took all night. Never mind, mate. No, no, from work, sorry. Well, it's only 20 past 10 now. I mean, I could get up at half five, not yourself, tomorrow morning. Good but, uh, <laughs> cry you a river. Keep it to the football. <laughs> keep it to the football, boys. Come on. But yeah, but no, no. It's just great, isn't it? So, should we get into. Uh, should we get into the game? Yeah, let's get into more of the game. Five changes from the Fulham 7 0. Um, Bree, Bradley, Campbell, Cornick all coming back in for Clark Potts. Hilton, Snodgrass, Lockyer, and Onya Dinma. Um, is that a five? Potts, Hilton, Snodgrass. Oh, okay, sorry, producer Jacob. Sorry, I was, I was, I was looking for something to moan in. <laughs> That's fine. Like, always trying to pick It's great to yeah. see um, Bree back, wasn't it? After... Oh, yeah, to be fair, with how excited were we? Like, I mean, everyone was excited. Everyone was like putting, oh, yeah, Bree's back, Bree's back. And Bradley and Campbell. Obviously, well, we didn't know what... Years ago. what um, what was up with Campbell after after last Saturday? The only one missing that you maybe would have liked to see was Adebayo, but you get to see him on the pitch at the end of the game. And I think Cornick said in this post match that he's hoping Adebayo might be ready for Friday. But I don't know. Well, if he is, that will be a bonus. If he isn't, we have to go with what we've got, don't we? Yeah. We, you know, um, he's he's very valuable in our squad at the moment. Let's hope he can it would just be a huge boost, wouldn't it? If, yeah, it, if would we be, could it would be a boost. Totally. Get him back fit for. The playoffs. Um, Jerome started uh, instead of Adebayo then and had a really good chance after like 30 seconds. I think he should have mm. scored. I think he should have scored. 100%. One on one. Yeah, one, 100%. He should have scored. And how much would that have relieved the nerves? Yeah. Do you uh, reckon that's the type of chance that is what we're going to, like, we might get one of them on Friday in against Huddersfield and you kind of feel like we're going to have to take that chance when it comes? Yeah. I mean, he should have taken that yeah. chance Saturday. For definite, I mean, he got himself in a good position, you know. Um, I suppose if he'd lifted the ball a bit higher, it's a goal. Just disappointing. Yeah, we do need to take those chances. I just think he could have taken another touch. I'm not relying. Yeah, I thought he took quite early. Do you yeah. think he made it too obvious as well? He, he, opened, he opened up his up body, slightly, and yeah, I think it. it was just a bit obvious for the keeper. But yeah, look, at the same time as well, the keeper done well. He uh, got down quick, didn't he? I mean, cause you see a lot of those shots squirm under the goalkeeper going, but look, look, he probably should be scoring. I think Maybe he knows. Kind of I think he knows that too. I think he was disappointed that he yeah, didn't of course. score. I mean, how many times Jerome done it in the past? You know what I mean, oh, yeah, in the he, Premier League or yeah. the Championship, he's he used to tuck him away, didn't he? So, but I think the lads lost a bit of pace, unfortunately, which is probably he's maybe why took it. He's probably thought, yeah, before I get caught up or whatever. But I yeah, thought, I thought overall thought. though, on, on on the weekend, he had a good game. He was, he was brilliant. He was. Yeah. Did he get a man of the match on Sky? Uh, I think he did the other day against Blackpool, maybe. I don't know if it was this weekend. I might be wrong. I don't know. Um, a couple of other chances we had was, I think Campbell had a header from a nice little ball in, which just couldn't get enough power on it. Smallest man on the pitch. Bree had a free kick on the edge, and I was sitting there thinking, go on, hole away again, fingers crossed, but just wide of the post. Um, Ingram made a good save, and obviously I think Nathan Jones has, has made it clear this week how you know uh, proud of him he is that he... You know, he shipped seven on his debut 
mentally for him that must have been quite tough coming in and having to play uh, play Fulham apparently he's had to cancel his uh, honeymoon to play part in the playoffs which you would say fair play but he pulled off an alright save I think it was right at him in the end but he looked solid didn't he but he Ingram? stood up to it though he stood up to it yeah no he, looked, he didn't do anything wrong to be fair to him I mean occasionally we saw him take a couple of touches or whatever else yeah and sometimes you just get rid of the ball a bit quicker or whatever else and the, you know a few decisions maybe was kicking but Apart from that, no, nah, he did nothing wrong. I mean, he didn't really have anything to do, realistically. Fly, fly sorry, as a fly. Um, sorry, 18th, mate, he, didn't, he didn't come from you, don't worry. <laughs> 18th clean sheet of the season for Luton with six different goalkeepers, I think, all playing a yeah. part in that. But you look at... Six. These, Jesus. yeah. You look at the teams that have kept the most clean sheets and I think we are up there with Huddersfield and uh, I think Sheffield United are up there as well, but... And we'll talk about this in the preview bit in a bit, but three more clean sheets and we're in the Premier League. Maybe. <laughs> unless we lose on pens. So that yeah. But I'm not even thinking about that yet. You you kept eighteen already, just three more. Doesn't even have to be three. Two it could be two and you could get into the Premier League. Yeah, we'll win the first leg three one. There you go. Um should we talk about the goal that put us into the lead and into the playoffs? It was uh, a moment of brilliance, I'd say, from Harry Cornig, but this is a goal that I always feel we never see as a Luton fan for us. And I can't remember the last time we were kind of gifted a goal like that. And for once, it's just nice for that to happen to us, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You say like us, the type of goal we don't see. I actually didn't see it. I had my head in my hands from the previous <laughs> like, chance. Like, oh, it was Bell's ball know, across no, the goal, wasn't yeah, it? And it was my face going, oh, no, we're going to get the score today. Looked up, smiling to myself and, oh, yeah. Next thing I was like, why is everyone like sort of going at me? <laughs> Next thing I seen Cornet go around the goalkeeper. I was like, what happened there? Everyone was like, oh yeah, he just he basically snuck behind him. I was like, did he? It was the right pantomime goal, wasn't it? Let's be fair. It was the right pantomime goal. But you're right. You know, what made Cornet think that he was going to do that? You yeah, know? because you see it all the, all the time. Yeah, and players they, standing behind keepers and it never, never really keep, works. But the keepers always look round. Always. Yeah. And this guy this time didn't. He I just, think it was because... All of the Reading defenders, if you watch the replay yeah, back, off. all just run off. None yeah. of them are looking back at the keeper. So there's no one pointing. Well, no one told him. That's what I found strange. No yeah. one told a goalkeeper. Not even their own fans. They you can hear their fans yeah. shouting. Yeah, yeah, you can, shouting, to be fair. They? Yeah, they were shouting quite loud. Yeah, because I could hear a few like moaning and groaning. You can hear it on yeah. the replays as well of, of their fans shouting. But but it's just well, crazy. clearly not loud enough. It's brilliant yeah. from Cornet though. And, and to, to take that touch out, I, I, I know it's an open goal, but I still feel like it looked like a tougher finish than maybe it was, or maybe it was a t- it was a tougher finish than it looked. Sorry. So be fair to the goalkeeper; he nearly got hands for it. Yeah. So yeah, the fair play to Cornick because it's yeah. just that moment of brilliance and just yeah, that's it. creativity, I guess, just to go. All right, I'm gonna stand here and just, just try my luck. Why it, not? Yeah, just a stealth mode, wasn't it? And it's like I said, that's the kind of goal I feel like normally happens against us, and I think Shea did it against Scunthorpe um, a couple of couple of years ago, three years ago maybe, in League One. Um it's gone for? Was it Leanne Goal or whatever? I can't remember who it was, Peter but Ross I definitely Ross. remember that happening. Shrewsbury? He puts the ball down because he thought it was a free kick or something. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember. He thought it was a free that? kick yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, a free yeah. kick. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was Leanne Goal, wasn't it? And it was then, yeah. even in like the Blackpool playoffs, the last kick of the game where Blackpool won at Kenilworth Road and it's kind of like rebounded off a player, off our keeper and gone in. And you just think like, we never get a goal like that, but yeah, Saturday. Fortunately for us, yeah. Saturday was the day that all changed, and I'm happy for that. Um, second half, we were brilliant to just hold on and, and keep the win. Uh, Jerome hit the bar. Great save, by the um, way, as well. And Ingram made a, a, a good save. Yeah, he has a brilliant save, sorry, yeah. Ingram made a good save at the far post from a header. And we just held on. The results went our way, thankfully, with Middlesbrough losing 4-1 at Preston and Bournemouth beating Mill 2-0, but uh, 1-0. But yeah. It's confirmed us in the playoffs. And now we can get excited, can't we? And now we can get really excited. And this is what we've yes. been waiting for. Uh, not going not, not gonna to say all season, because at the start of the season, it was maybe just a dream. But maybe in the last few months, we started going, all right, we could actually do yeah, this here. But it's nice to have a shot at the playoffs, isn't it? It's just nice to have that chance now. And I, I feel like if we wouldn't have gotten the playoffs, I'd have been disappointed. But if we lose any... <coughs> of these playoffs I feel like 
I'm not going to be as disappointed as I would have been if we wouldn't have made I it. I think you will. Yeah. And the reason yeah, I think you will. Yeah. Listen, listen. I know what you're saying, though. No, I, yeah, I think it, this is dreamland for us. If you'd have said at the beginning of the season, this is where we'd be, we'd all go, I'll take that. Um, but you're, you're having a laugh. We're going we're gonna to be better than last season, but are we going to push for the playoffs? We're going to win it. But the thing is, I think I said this on um, the Reading podcast the other day, the fact that we've been in that top six for a while now, yeah, it, you would have been more gutted not making it. If we'd have been in seventh, you know, skirting with them and, you know, having that, that chance of like Millwall or Middlesbrough had, and we didn't make it, you'd go, okay, fair enough. But had we not made it after the season we've had, I think I'd have been entirely gutted. Yeah, 100%, because at the same time, we all knew, well, like I said, I think I said three, two, three matches ago, I said, there's no way we're not making the playoffs. Yeah. And it got to the last cut of the game and you thought, shit, and it was 7-0 like defeat to Fulham. You thought, here we go, here we go. But I think deep down, we were never panicking. We were a bit nervous, I think, about it. I mean, everyone was a bit nervous. I think deep down, we knew we were going to do it. That game was as big as, as the Blackburn game for us when we stayed up, having to win. You, if they know they have to win, they're going to go out and do their best, right? Don't get me wrong, a Blackburn game felt a lot better, though. But more pressure. But more, more pressure yeah. that game than there was this game. Yeah, this is yeah. it. Yeah, there was more pressure. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, even if we hadn't won, like we said, the other two teams had to win, or at least get a better result than than Middlesbrough did. They needed to draw, yeah. didn't they? So with, in that respect, we deserve every single thing we've got so far. It's um, it is quite exciting, and I just hope that when we get to the game on Friday, um, we get a couple of goals in and uh, you know take a lead up to. To their place. That's what you've got to hope for, right? I just can't wait for Super Sunday next year against Liverpool at Anfield. <laughs> right, yeah. It'd be Imagine so good. That, Imagine Sunday it. Four thirty. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, Imagine Liverpool it. versus Luton, or oh, I've just I'm been real. finding it so surreal. Um, just watching Sky over the last few days and just seeing it say like Championship playoffs, Luton v Huddersfield. Mm. It's just like I can't get my head around it. Like it's actually real, and it doesn't kind of feel real and I don't think it will until it's 7.45 on Friday night at packed out Kenilworth Road mm. on a Friday evening under the lights noise and it's just going to be rocking and I think it might be the loudest we'll ever hear Kenilworth Road and I, I think it's something that I don't think anyone of us I don't, I'm not ready for it I'm just so excited it's just do you know what? I'm not ready for it I haven't got my ticket yet I need to do that tonight don't I yeah I'll get, you, I'll get your ticket mate yeah, get that sorted straight away after this I'm going to do it um, so Stop looking at the playoffs then, how do we approach both legs? Do we approach the games differently? How do we set up? How do we go about getting the best result possible for us over these two legs? Well, you, I don't think you, can set up, you, can't, you can't set up the second leg until you know what's happened in the first. Yeah. That's the first thing. I think we need to get two, two goals in front if we can. You know, how, can we do that? I don't know. You know, it's been tough against them all, you know, the both times we played scored them, against them this season. Both times, we? We, I was just about to say, both times we played them, it's been really tough. Could I be wrong? Are they the only team we haven't scored against this season? Though? Birmingham or another? Is there anyone else we haven't scored against this season? Sheffield United? Okay, yeah. Yeah, don't even go down that route. <laughs> yeah, that's going to say. <laughs> but we haven't scored against them. They've obviously well, got then, a really good uh, clean sheet uh, record. But we've got one defeat in 13 home games, so... We just need to make sure, one, we don't lose, and two, we need to get a goal. We, it'd be good to get a goal, but don't lose the first leg. Make yeah, that's, sure... That's make sure. Few boys, don't, yeah. Just don't lose. Just don't, don't lose. Don't lose, but make sure, because you're always in it. Look at, again, you've only got to look at the game tonight and look at, look at Wickham the other night. Um, that, Wickham took, what, a 2-0 lead to, to MK and just about held on to it. Sunderland took a 1-0 lead and nearly lost it. So I think if we can get a couple of goals, that would be fantastic. If we can't, don't concede. Do not concede a goal. If it goes down to the second leg, it, it, it's all to play for on the night, realistically. That's that's the main thing. Like you say, just do not lose and just go to the second leg if you have to. If you go there don't take a, chances. Yeah, but if you go there as a draw, if you go there at nil-nil, it's a cup final, isn't it? It's a one-off game. Yeah. If you go, I, if you go there three-nil up, then it, you, you've you really got to, you know set your game out differently haven't you I would find it really interesting to know like the official stats of when the team plays at home first how many progress to the final because it does feel like you look at the league one players obviously you said earlier the two teams that played at home first are through to the final Yeah. Um, back in the conference days we played Wrexham in that first leg at home and we won 2-0 and we 
when and went three nil up at their place. I know they pulled it back to three two, and it was nervy, mm. but we got the job done. And it's just like if you can have that home leg first and get the win, I feel like it's better than trying to get the win away from home in the first leg. If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because you could listen in the first after the first game, the tie could be over. The literal tie could be over, couldn't it? If you have a if you have a good, I'm not saying us on Friday, but anyone in that first game at home, with with all the excitement from the crowd and all the expectation, game could be over. You know, three four nil if you if you get that chances. However, um, teams in fifth and sixth place are in the Premier uh, in the in the League One final. So why can't we do I it? I just don't understand why us as football fans and, you know, obviously football managers out there or whoever else, they'll go, they'll turn around and say, but we're discussing now about a home leg and an away leg. Why do we worry about if we're playing home or away? For, I don't know. I, I'm always in the mindset of if you're home or away or wherever you are, it, it doesn't really matter. You just go and set out to... Does, the, it, does it really yeah. matter? I mean, because you just go there I to... I think the positives, though, the positives of playing at home first is that, like you said, you've got that electric atmosphere you've got all that momentum from your fans and your home advantage that if you can go a couple of goals up it completely changes the second leg and the other team's home advantage because you go there and you set up not to lose and it's completely different as if we needed to go to Huddersfield and win we're going to be more open and try and get a goal whereas we could go to if we're tuning up on Friday I wouldn't be surprised if we went to Huddersfield on Monday and we just proper shithoused our way to a, to a draw or yeah a one nil loss or something. I could just see that happening. I can see us taking 20 seconds for a goal kick, players going down every opportunity. And it wouldn't be pretty, but if that's what needs to happen, do you got to do it really? And that's the thing that would disrupt Huddersfield's home advantage. That's why I think if you can have that home leg first and get the result, we saw it against York in the playoffs. I know what you're saying. In the conference, we lost one nil away in that first leg. I they understand the whole thing of the, the, the crowd, the fans obviously say like, for example, we, one on Friday night and obviously Monday we go to Huddersfield and we're two, I don't know, we're two goals up and I get the fans then get frustrated it maybe then reflects and it's a bit quiet it's a bit nervy I, I get that but I don't know I'm just always in the in the process of thinking to myself like should it really matter you just got to do a job really realistically whether the crowd's cheering you on or not I think well, you've got to be more professional haven't you as a football no, player like, I just generally think um, especially in our ground when it's so compact and so tight, I do think the crowd has a has a has a role to play on the on the game. I really do. I think um, some players get nervy in front of it. Yeah, hang I'm on not a minute, denying though. that. I'm just I'm just questioning. I just don't really understand no. the whole. No, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. By the way, I'm just no. saying I've just never really understood it. Obviously, I, I get there is like an advantage. Obviously, fans and obviously, like you say, you can it's, it's tension and certain circumstances do play a part. But I've never really understood like. If you're a professional footballer and you can't go out and do a job in front of like an opposition crowd or whatever else and people go, oh, you know, we're in front of it's the weird away though, fans it tonight is, and it's, whatever else. It's, just it's that psychology job. though, isn't it? And I think I heard or read something about Tottenham, um, how they struggled in their first season at Wembley or something because uh, it was... It, it, shit. It, was it was kind of like understanding just moments in games of passes that you would know you know just off the top of your head like a long diagonal and you'd kind of like I'm sorry I'm really badly explaining this but yeah I'm, I'm starting to question I think you is, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you had a drink <laughs> you should have one no but uh, no, okay let me try let me try again so imagine like a Kenilworth Road right it's like Bree gets the ball on the right hand side and he knows right if I aim this ball like at say the clock. yeah exactly like <laughs> at the clock or something Surely not. as like a diagonal he knows that Fred on your dim is going to be there it's, it's like that that understanding and that apparently with Spurs, it was like so different to White Hart Lane that it took him a while to get used to like the small things like that. Really? So but, um, that's but what you, I'm just saying. Like it's just the psychology of like home that, advantage right? and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the other psychology of home advantage when you've got, and I know we haven't got a huge crowd at Kenworth Road, like but when <laughs> you're you've, looking at like certain aspects of the stadium, yeah, I'm thinking, but, what? But when you, when you think about familiar, it, f- f- what's that word? Familiarization? Familiar. Oh come on, now <laughs> with come someone. On, no. <laughs> when you when you think about home advantage and things like that, you know, you think about penalty incidents and you think about most of the stadium roaring penalty or roaring a foul. Sometimes it pushes the it pushes it there, and and the ref will go, "What? What have I missed?" 
and they'll look mm. for it. You harder. always say this, and I never believe that. Well, it's true. Mm. See, no, that's it's true. I would believe that. That's the really thing I do believe. Yeah, yeah I it's do, true. With a home craft, I do think that you can buy yourself sometimes fouls and whatever else by we, the crowd going a, mental. A few seasons ago, we had a right wing lineman, so he's right down our side of the our left wing line. So he was on our side, and every time he put his flag up, I moaned at him every time. Oh yes, I'm sure he's. Yeah, it really helped, Dave. Well yeah, done. every time. But there's one time we 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 all moaned at him, and he he was wrong. But he did flagged. he turn around and go sorry? No, he flagged no, now. No, he flagged. Oh. All right, look, I'm just saying <laughs> the crowd have an influence, and if you don't think they do, then don't go. <laughs> you, know, you say that's <laughs> everything. It's like yeah, you know, just don't go. No, because just get behind the, the, the most important thing on Friday is to them. get behind the team, isn't it? And, and cheer them through it. You know, shut up. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> that doesn't sound like it. It's true. Well, you can talk. Um, I know my own mind. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be really interesting how we do approach that first leg. And and what I would say about these two games we're going to have is. Even if we lose on Friday, say we lose one 0 on Friday, we will have a chance in that second leg. And I just and I just think you get a chance every game. Just got to take it. It's yeah, I think it's important not to underestimate Huddersfield. They didn't yeah. they didn't finish third by by accident. You know they're the one team that not many people have been talking about really this season. To be fair, there was a stage before they beat Hull one 0 where they were on a poor run, and I thought. These, they're going to drop out. And they've they picked, they picked up massively up so since then. season. They, they're going to drop out for an hour yeah. and they'll never sustain that. And the next minute you think, shit, I think they've got they've really got strong towards the end of the season. Yeah. You look at it and you think, play some good football. And they like they went to Coventry the other day and won 2-1 and they've had some brilliant results. In, I think they got beat by uh, Bournemouth a few weeks ago, but Bournemouth are brilliant. But, we, um, just, we just need to be solid, not concede. And if we can get a goal, you're right. If we go at nil nil to their place, we're still in the game. If we go up there and we're losing three nil, it'll be a good day out. Mm. But well, we don't have that day. No, it'll be a good day out goal. because we'd have already bought our bloody tickets. Uh, before we read what you guys said about the playoffs, so there's another question I wanted to ask: Which player do you reckon will be the most important to us in the playoffs? I see, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of that question because I no. think they're all important. Well, they are all really important, but if you had to pick up one. A stronger player for me. The player that plays the best in the day and brings well, his man in the match. There you go. Sort I, th- of, I think sort of you'd say, though, to be fair. Well, the player, yeah, I would, that's the sort of thing I would normally <laughs> yeah. say. Um, you need someone like Alan Campbell to play really, really well out of his skin. Uh, maybe Cornick to have the game of his life. So you can't pick one, but um, they're all going to give it, aren't they? They're well, I think it's like best. you said, it's, it's in these situations where you need the experienced heads, you need the leaders to come through. So maybe you look at someone like Sonny Bradley and go, he's going to be so important to us because you heard what Harry Cornick said about him the other day of, of how much everyone respects Sonny and how much of a leader he is and he, he keeps him going. And you kind of think, could it be that, for example, we won the up in that first leg and we're in the 70th minute, nil nil in the second leg, that you just need Sonny there to go like, come on guys, keep your head. The, the game plan for the last 20 minutes is it that we need Snodgrass for his experience and he's done it before with, did he do it with Villa? Or did he do it with West Ham? Yeah, I think, no, Villa I think, wasn't it? But look where he's been. He's done it a few Look at the games he's played in and the and league. And Lansbury as well. Exactly. Like, you, you, you look at all these individuals and you think, like you said, everyone is going to be important. But I think it's important to have someone over these two games that is going to lead the team, be someone that players can look to for help or, or something just to help us get through these two legs but I think successfully you're right. I think you're right what you said there Sonny though I think he's massive for what we do I know I'm biased he's always going to say oh, there we go again about Sonny but I think I think when he's in the team he like I've always said it he makes other players look more outstanding if that makes sense and he look he came back the other day he didn't look the sharpest in certain situations, but I thought we had a he very, solid, very strong he? game. He was very solid. Yeah, and he I read think, the game so well. I think the other thing we can't forget is the absolute role the manager has to play and the management team setting the team up for both games. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just two more. Come on, just one trip to Wembley would be lovely, wouldn't it? And a win there. Yeah, and win, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but way. let's get there first. Um, look... I'm under no illusions. They're not going to be easy games. They're not going to be easy games. Like you say, you're going to be a scrappy game maybe to start with. Put it this way. I said Nervy that, game. I but if we, day, sorry, Dave, go on. Sorry I'm just thinking if we, get, if we are lucky enough to get those early chances like we got against Reading and we take them, 
then you know you might relax a bit more. I think yeah. we'll get a couple of big chances on Friday. I, th- I think we will. Well, I hope you're right. But then again, I think Huddersfield will, and I think we'll have to ride our luck as well because they'll be coming to us going. They're good. That's third. We're a good team, exactly. They're third. We, they finished three places above us. They, I don't know how many points above us it was. Seven. Yeah, you know they had it's a push. Quite a lot, really, is it? But you know they they they're under you know they're on a the roll. They're expecting to come and not lose. So and their fans would expect to turn us over. Would they? Yeah, absolutely. Mm, absolutely. I don't know. Why, why do you say no? Because I don't think they would expect to turn us over. I think out of the three other other two other teams in the in the in the in the playoffs, they prefer to play us. Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. So that that's that thing, isn't it? Yeah, but then we that's prefer to play them over Sheffield that. United well, and Forest. Well, no, yeah, no, 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 I disagree. I said, to you, I said to you all the other day, I want to play Forest in the playoffs because I still <laughs> no, 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 no. Forest scare me. Yeah, so but, does Sheffield yeah, United. But they haven't beaten us this season, and both times we played them, they've not been great. Yeah, but if we have to play them now in the final, we'll beat them. Well, the history of us in finals against them is not good. Yeah, well, don't worry about that day. That's history. That's old news, mate. He's got a point. Should we hear what oh, you guys said about the playoffs then? Which player will be most important to us in the playoffs? And how do we approach both legs? Richard says, Snodgrass will be the most important to us. Experience is everything. These games come down to the percentages, although all season different heroes have popped up when we have needed them. True. Which is very true. And it could be, look, Elijah could come back and carry us through two legs and score worldy goals or something. You know, you just never know who's going to be the hero. Yeah, it could be... Jerome scoring a hat trick or something. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Jerome. Oh, I'd love that. Sponsored by DLE Driving School. Yeah, Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Steve said, Bree's return yesterday was huge in terms of balance, width and attacking options. We now need him to rediscover his best set pieces as that could be key to unlocking Huddersfield. Yeah, see, there you go. That's one player I would say that's massively important for us. James Bree, phenomenal. Always said it, don't get enough recognition and he's starting to get a bit more this season but he deserves a lot more. I'd love us on Friday to early have an early corner bit like Chelsea Bree in Burke header puts it past keeper 1-0 up that was a berry ball against Chelsea was it well sorry, either way sorry <laughs> that's where I'm pretty wrong now I'm like fuck hell no I think it was you're right uh, Barney says the whole team will be most important worst case scenario we're doing Watford in next season and putting in another guest season uh, nothing to lose so it can just go all out yeah what he meant there was go up come down yeah um, but that doesn't matter, does it? Because like we said last time, it pays for the stadium. Yeah. We don't, we don't care if we go up and go down anyway. So. But you know what? Be realistic. If we do go up, none of us are going to think we're going to stay up. No. I don't think he did mean that. He said, worst case scenario, we are doing Watford, in, as in we'll be beating Watford next season. And putting in another guest season? What does that mean? I have no idea. But anyway, I don't know if I agree with nothing to lose and just go all out because I think when you're in this situation... Why would you go all out instead of yeah? Instead of trying to have a game plan to get through it, it's, I, I get. I, I guess it's like I know we weren't expected to be in the position. We're still not expected to get promoted because the bookies have us all at like four, five to one to win the playoffs. Um, I don't know. Going all out, maybe if we're losing in the first day, you can go all out in the second. But I genuinely think so. Think we should have a game plan and still <coughs> approach the game. But I generally think way to win it. Yeah. I generally think the uh, hashtag teams like Luton is still there. I still think people don't think we're good enough. And I think they, you know, underestimate us at your peril. And you're going to get a massive shock. Well, I hope so, it. because you know what? We, you, know, you, don't finish, you don't finish six, do you? Um, and also let QPR win their cup final against us and stuff like that yes, and finish above them. So it's all about who's got the biggest nerve on Friday, and I hope it's us. I'll be honest, Rob, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm feeling us to get promoted this season with like a team in the final or probably, I don't know, Naismith centre mid, Potts centre back. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, uh, mate, I, Fred, Fred will look, come back and play I have had right a few visions. Or something. This morning I drove to work in silence for 20 minutes because in my head I was playing out different scenarios for the playoffs. And I just get really excited and it's like, I can just picture us having Sheffield United in the final and like holding on to like the 70th minute and getting like, a chance, like half a chance that mm. we just like get, I don't know, like do a th- header from a corner that just goes in and the crowd goes mad and then we just hold on and win one. I just, do you think, do you, do you two think that this is the most important game you've ever watched? No. Yeah. 
No, maybe not most important, but maybe like the biggest in terms of, you know, the league we're in and, and yeah, the position so we're in. Of course. So if we get to the playoff final, that would be the biggest game you've ever seen. Yeah. As a Luton fan, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm probably. 27 next week, so. Wow. Yeah, no, anyway. no, no, it probably would be the biggest. Back to Jess. And I, I, I'd say a lot of Luton fans who are listening right now would probably agree is this, these are potentially the biggest games we've ever seen as Luton fans. Maybe uh, not the most important because we have had more important ones, but... I don't know, there's been a couple, more, you know, a couple of FA Trophy games back in the day. <laughs> Swindon <big>. Supermarines. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jez says, Cornick will be most important. He gets us goals from nowhere, especially the ones against Cardiff and Reading. Fans need to be in Huddersfield's faces the whole game on Friday. There you go. Told you. The fans will make a difference. What runs the pitch? Go. Well, don't run on the pitch, no, no but you know, you know what we say. Don't want to get kicked out again, Vitara, mate. Not me. Oh, not me. Not me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a bit rude anyway. Yeah, sorry, Stop. mate. Uh, Alan says Alan Campbell will be most important. His relentless pressing will unsettle their midfield and he could easily grab us a crucial goal home or away. Very important not to lose the home leg. A draw wouldn't be a problem. I think Jones goes out to win both legs 1 0. Jerome also important. Well, I'll tell Jerome that tomorrow. Oh, I'm so nervous for this weekend. I don't, stop being nervous. Be, just I'm, but I'm a bit of it. I'm nervous and excited because in my head, like I said, I've painted so many scenarios that I'm I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just not knowing what to expect. I just don't want to be built up. The worst thing would be... To go. The worst thing would be losing the home leg. That would be the worst. And losing it by more than one. That would be worst. Oh, don't. Right, so you've got to prepare for that just in case. But if we play well, as a fan, yeah, I think so. Because if, if as a fan, especially if you're going to the away leg, um, that'll be a difficult trip, won't it? If you're 2 0 down, it'll yeah, be a difficult trip. Will we be 2 0 down? No, I'm not saying we Probably will. Not. I said the most important thing Hopefully is not. let's not underestimate Huddersfield's. Uh, I'm not underestimating Huddersfield. I think they'll be very but good. Will the excitement from the terraces go onto the pitch and spur our players on to play better? Yes. Kevin says, can't really say any player is more important than the other, which is telling in itself in a good way, of course. Yeah. Need to take the same front-footed, aggressive approach in all the games we've had so far and see where it takes us. And Dwayne says, they're all important, all about some of your parts. Um, approach both games to win, none of this setting up not to lose. We have achieved the practically impossible this season, so we should just enjoy it so far, uh, as far as possible. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be nervy. We're going to get in that stadium and we're all going to stand there absolutely terrified Say naked, and excited. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> come on. Well, you can do whatever you like. You get, naked, you anyway. That'll be the second time you've been chucked out. Um, but, you know, it's going to be fun. And, you know, ride ride the waves because, it you know, it doesn't happen that often. Can you set up both legs to win? Why not? Can. Why not? Because when have you ever seen that before in a playoff game? Oh, wait a minute. You recall every single playoff game that's been in the last 10, 15 years. Oh, no, I can't remember. Don't you think, though, don't you think that when... <laughs> Just, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely shut me down. <laughs> Sorry. Well, when, it's true. When, I don't know. There might have been times. But w when you watch Wickham play Milton Keynes at Wickham, Milton Keynes didn't go there not to win, did they? No. And they, they set up at home to win. So I don't understand that logic of yours. You go to a game yeah, to win the game. Wickham went into that first game to win it and went into that second leg with no intention of winning it, but just seeing, like, well, just that's being true. really Wickham, tight and pretty yeah. much. doing yeah. a Wickham. Do it yeah. Wickham yeah. Even, like, I guess you could say Sunderland today, they said on the radio, turning up, there was 10 minutes added time for time-wasting and stuff. Uh, They've... Uh, uh, they, and they, and have they, they come was, there was today? Bad injury for about six minutes. Okay. Head injury. But did they come today going, all right, we're just going to go for this and try and win the game? Or did they come here to go... If we keep a clean sheet here, we're going through. Well, a clean sheet is important, yeah, but that, when you're watching Luton Town, um, sometimes in that pressure situation, you always wonder, will we concede? You know, we step back, we, 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 we defend deeper, and, you know, we've been kicked in the teeth more than once by that. I would say, though, this season, more than ever, I would feel confident in our team seeing out a clean sheet, just because of I feel like we've, we said it since January when we beat... Bristol City 1-0 that we've been so good at just grinding out results that it could be time for it to happen 
Who beat Bristol City 1-0? I don't know if it was Bristol City. It was a team in January. I can't remember. It was like a Tuesday night. So I'm picking on you a bit tonight, here, and I'm calling out everything yeah. you're saying. It's, yeah, as I was say, we definitely beat Bristol City 2-1, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. but I thought we beat Barnsley 2-1 and beat Bristol City 1-0. I might be wrong. I might. I be can't wrong. remember. I had COVID at that time, so I, hang on. But you I weren't there, was you? Was I day was, yes, day this day we played in white at home. I think that was against Bristol City. Lockyer scored. Well, there you go. We'll just take that as a as a. Feynman given. scored as well, so it's two one. <laughs> it, he did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're down. having a scrap, you. <laughs> Get close to your mic. I put it down. There you go. I might as well just hold it. Just hold it, exactly. It makes everyone's life easier. Thank you, mate. I'm more comfortable like this as well. Okay, cool story. Um, okay. <laughs> Look, it's going to be a very exciting couple of games. And look, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves and say if we get to the final. But if we get to the final, VAR in the final. Mm. Is that being confirmed? I think I read VAR it. It's confirmed, the fi- well, confirmed for the final. It's, it's not always it's in the final. Shocker, isn't it? No, this would be the first time. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Because you know what? It might help us. Um, and then we shall like VAR. But as it stands, if VAR is introduced for the final of the playoffs, then I am very, very upset about that. Cheers, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this time next week. The thing is, he's not in no, the, well, actually, no, this time you're next not week. You're not on the video week, anymore. Uh, forward. Oh, yeah, you've not been oh, on the video. So, to be fair, it's all right, though, because this is much easier to do like no, this. We're, we're, we're wrapping up anyway. But Ooh, this time oh, next week, up, then. We'll, know, we'll know our fate. We'll know. If, stop. <laughs> we'll know if we're going to Wembley. We'll know if we've got another season in championship. Whatever it is, like it's been hey, listen, a brilliant if, season. Hundred percent. Hundred percent, Matara. Hundred percent. And let's say, look, no matter what, look, we're going to try and do a podcast after the first leg. Maybe we will get together Saturday or Sunday and, and record something. Uh, we'll definitely have one after the second leg, and hopefully two more after that. But. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? So thank you so much for listening today. If you haven't watched us yet, go over to YouTube. Um, subscribe. Subscribe. Over in the town. And if you're watching and you're a regular watcher, thank you so much. Leave a comment below. How do you think we approach both legs? Do we go all out to win? Do we try and win the first and set up defensively for the second? And let us know what you think we should do. Who's going to be most important? And also subscribe if you haven't. Try and get us to 1,000. We need to get to 1,000 before hopefully the end of the season. But... Have you subscribed? You too. Yes, I subscribed. <laughs> Probably not. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for I can't watching. Do anything, Thank no. you so much for listening, <laughs> and we'll see you after the Huddersfield first leg. <laughs>